it's awfully quiet around here. The White House was a hive of activity in recent weeks as President Joe Biden ramped up his re-election campaign. And I'm going to beat him again. But with his recent withdrawal from the race this week, the scene has changed. Biden on Tuesday quietly returned to the White House after his recovery from COVID-19, as Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign took off. She hit Wisconsin on Tuesday. The opposing campaign of former President Donald Trump chose Tuesday to strike at both targets. My history will remember Joe Biden as not just a quitter, which he is, but one of the worst presidents in the United States of America. But my friends, Kamala Harris is a million times worse, and everybody knows it. She signed up for every single one of Joe Biden's failures, and she lied about his mental capacity to serve as president. In Washington, Secretary of State Antony Blinken extolled Harris for being, quote, a leading voice for American foreign policy and for our diplomacy. But he emphasized that Biden has a lot of work ahead of him, even as Harris campaigns to take the reins. What he's intensely focused on is the work that remains over these next six months to continue the, uh, uh, the efforts, the work that we've been doing, uh, particularly uh, trying to bring peace to the Middle East, uh, ending the war in Gaza, putting that region on a better trajectory. Analysts agree. One eighth of his presidency is still left and um, there continue to be real challenges, both at home in terms of lowering costs, in terms of protecting consumers from junk fees, in in protecting workers from um, terrible rules that benefit corporations and overseas, Um, you know, uh, trying to bring a ceasefire and a peace in the Middle East, trying to continue to push back against Russia's uh, war in Ukraine. And this situation also leaves foreign leaders in an interesting position, as Israel's prime minister is learning this week as he prepares to meet with Biden, Harris and Trump. Well, I do think Biden has one problem internationally, which is that foreign leaders know he's not going to be around after a few more months. And so they are going to be hesitant to make deals with him because they know that whoever comes next, and even if it is Harris, uh, she is likely to have her own foreign policy team and her own set of aims. On the other hand, I think foreign leaders will want to accomplish things they can get accomplished quickly with Biden because they're not sure what will happen next. For the second time this month, Biden will use the somber setting that is the Oval Office to speak live to the nation. On Wednesday night, he'll use it to tell his people why he made the very personal decision to step back. Anita Powell, VOA News, The White House.